All right, well, we did it. We waited about two hours. We cooked these rocks at 1,000 degrees Celsius. Remember, the whole point of what we were doing was driving off CO2. Uh, and I came in here about an hour ago and turned to the soft to let it cool down. There was kind of glowing heat coming out the top. But it should be fairly cool now. So let's go ahead and check out what we have. So it's still pretty hot. I don't think that I want to touch any of that. But I'll, here, let me uh, move the camera in. And the, the biggest difference that I see is that those rocks were essentially dark gray to almost black when we put them in, and now they're like bone white. And there's even some weird yellow where the whiteout was on there. So if we take a look at these, glad that didn't, hope that didn't melt the camera. Um, yeah, so what we have there is essentially, um, calcium oxide rather than calcium carbonate it's, it's a it's a different weekend and actually what I wanted to show you this um, well this one's full of fossils but this is just a kind of regular piece of limestone um, actually from the same area where we recovered uh, the stuff that we threw in the kiln um, but if we look here these are the blocks of limestone that have been kilned and had that co2 driven off so this is essentially um, calcium oxide or CaO um, so yeah, very beautiful. They're kind of this white, you know, bright bone white. And, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to add water to them to hydrate it. It's called the slaking process and making slaked lime. Um, and it produces a little bit of heat. So I've got a little water bath set up here and a, and a pie tin and I'll change the change the camera angle and we'll see what happens when we add some water to that okay well we've got our um well, we've got our kiln limestone ready to go um and i'm going to add a little bit of uh distilled water to it and keep in mind that these have been sitting all weekend so there's no there's no heat in these So you can see that lime essentially hydrating. I'm gonna add some more fluid here. I'm not sure if you can see the steam coming off of it, but there's an incredible amount of heat being produced. We want to get this to be kind of a paste. Well, that's pretty hot. Um, I don't want to get so, so deep into it, but I'm actually going to break it up a little bit and mix it, and we'll see if we can get that... Um, lime paste that we were going for. So I've got my mixer, a Bic pen here. I just don't want to get too much of this on my fingers. So I'm going to see how far along I can follow the, the path of actually making a cement. Um, we might run into some problems with, you know, either clay or volcanic ash. I'm going to try to add some ash to this after it dries, but this will probably have to dry all week. What you guys saw was one of the primary steps in creating concrete, right? I mean, fundamentally, you know, lots of types of mortar and, and um, you know, I guess some types of plaster, but, but cement generally are made out of just cooking limestone. And you can see that you could even do this in your wood stove, right? If you could get to a thousand degrees C, which is... All right, well, we've got it fairly well mixed here. Um, it's our, our kind of slurry, and we're well on our way to making concrete. Lime. 
basically the limestone that we broke down, mixed with water. I dried it, turned it into a powder. It's got a lot of chunks in it. I'm actually going to run it through the sieve. Um, but in looking for other, uh, in looking for other ingredients, one of the recipes I've found, because it turns out making concrete is not very straightforward, um, involves using volcanic ash. So I actually went and nabbed this from, you know, out on the Snake River Plain just a couple of days ago. This is a chunk of volcanic ash uh, from out of, out of the Lake Idaho sediments. Now, if this particular volcanic ash is going to work, I'm not sure. It's been hydrated. It was deposited in a lake. Um, so I don't necessarily have fresh volcanic ash on hand. But I am going to take this volcanic ash, the slaked lime, Okay, well, it looks like uh, I've got 400 milliliters of slaked lime. It's fairly fine powder, you can see here. I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be breathing it, but probably, probably I'm supposed to be breathing it. All right, so we can get after the volcanic ash and crush some pumice. All right, well, I uh, crushed up my volcanic ash. It's this very fine dust. Volcanic ash is a, is a strange thing. It's really um, kind of abrasive. It's just little pieces of volcanic glass. Um, but if I take my volcanic ash, looks like we have perfect. It's about 800. Um, milliliters and so remember we've got 400 milliliters of of our hydrated lime our slaked lime and so mixing those two together hopefully we'll get a chemical reaction if not you'll still learn something and what i'm gonna do with it I actually have <laughs> i feel like everything is kind of a mess here this is actually a model that i use in one of my classes for um kind of looking at topography but i was going to flip it over it's actually a, a, a volcano, and I was going to kind of see if we can cast a mold of this. And like I said, I'm not 100% sure this is going to work, but we're going to give it a try. And if not, it'll be a chapter in the failure of the history of concrete. All right, so I grabbed my trusty mixing spoon. This is a piece of the Morrison Formation. It's really famous. Um, generally, it has dinosaurs in it. This one doesn't. So I'm going to go ahead and add water um, and... Yeah, I'm going to be fast forwarding pretty quickly, but essentially I'm going to mix this into a paste and see how it works. Well, I've made a heck of a mess here, obviously. The lab team always loves that. But I have this paste. It's a little bit watery, maybe more watery than I had hoped. But I'm going to go ahead and take this paste and actually put it in this mold here. And we're going to let it cure and see see how it works. Like I said, there's, there's a chance that this doesn't work, but um, that's what they say with science, right? Sometimes it's just mess around and find out. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and um, pour this in the mold. Well, looks like we did it. Um, so I've got that poured in the mold. Um, at this point, I think we just sit back and wait, and I'll check back in with you and see how it did. All right, we'll uh, we'll do the magic of the magic of online class video, and we'll fast forward a few days into the future. I might actually bring this home, but right now it's pretty fluid, so we'll see. All right, check in with you later. Okay, well, it's been a couple of days. Uh, it's Monday. I let this thing sit over the weekend, and I think it might have worked. Um, it looks like it's definitely got some cracks in it, um, 
but as you can see, some parts are really thick and thin, so probably should have put something in there. I think the Romans used to use horse hair to prevent that from happening. So I'm going to go ahead and um, see how we did here. Yeah, well, um, it's not the har hardest concrete. Um, it's it's definitely bonded, right? It's it's stronger than um, you know just the powder was by itself. It's also still a little bit wet. It has a kind of funky smell to it, but I think you can see you know generally we made our we made our mold here and it's kind of holding together. I think there are probably some things I could have done differently. I think. Um, Maybe I didn't grind the limestone particle. You can still see there's little um, kind of white pieces where it was it was not quite as, as fine grained as it could have been. Um, maybe I'll figure out a uh, method to do this better in the future. But um, again, as much of a as much of a mess as I've made here, I think that we've successfully made some concrete. Um, one of the things that I've read about this type of concrete is that it actually absorbs CO2 with time. And so this is a type of concrete which clearly wouldn't be that useful in the modern world, but it generally gets strength over the course of kind of weeks to months. And additionally, actually, apparently if it's immersed in salt water, that actually adds um, further strength to this. So kind of, you know, Roman concrete going in pretty pretty old tech here. They had, they had plenty of time on their hands. So, um, we did it, although it's kind of broken, and maybe I can piece it back together a little bit here. But yeah, um, concrete. I'm actually gonna set this um, over here in my in my area and just let it kind of sit for for a little while and see if it gets harder with time.